Finally, the time has come, my ultrasonic cleaner ate my cheap Chinese airbrush gun. And because it was late Friday evening with an amateur's model build weekend at a stake, I had to rush out and get some replacement, a proper replacement this time. When buying an airbrush gun there are more considerations involved than budget and liking the look of it, I will compare it against my other airbrushes, focusing on the internals and share some of my thoughts in this video, making sure it will be worth your time. You guys are all able to read marketing text praising all heavens about a product by your own. So I will spare you further indoctrinations by not rattling down the list of properties and features. Instead, let me share some experience with my airbrushes in general and the intended application of this one. The moment was spontaneous, but the decision for this investment was already made a while ago. Short disclaimer, yes, I paid the full price, there was no sponsoring involved. I use cheap airbrushes for a while now, they do the job fine, however, I never liked the o-ring heavy design, but on the other hand, their build quality didn't put me off too far. Before that I used a Neo CN for Invata, same shitty nozzle design, slightly better spray pattern and better build quality in general. It offers less features, but effectively the same result, and the price on uh, replacement parts are insane. 11 bucks for an o-ring, yeah, I can try this with an artist. <laughs> so no entry level brushes um, for me this time when I have to pay the premium for the replacement part, I want the premium product in my hand. As an amateur model builder without a dedicated hobby room, I like to use water-based acrylics, artist-grade quality paints and branded model paints. They are very undemanding in use and cleaning and have very little impact to my environment, but the properties of these paints are not perfect when starting into a more advanced application. They try very fast on the tip of the needle, having access to this tip without removing the cap is a must-have for me. I can't escape lacquer-based acrylics for much longer, since they have in some cases superior properties when it comes to surface tension, drying time or viscosity in general, but they are immune to my current used ultrasonic bath, requiring a better solvent. And aside from me building scale models, my girlfriend and I drive RC vehicles, painting these polycarbonate Body shells requires an airbrush as well and some special paints, raising the involvement and the need of even more aggressive solvents uh, up to the pure acetone. Resistance or solvent proof for intense cleaning is a huge point for me. And this is my problem with the current airbrushes. They are very inconvenient to clean and do have a lot of small o-rings. Replacing these o-rings with proper ones would solve half of the problem here, but only half. Compared to the socket style nozzle design, more parts are involved. Fewer and more accessible parts to clean was high on my list. Solvent resistant PTFE seals were on point one, right down to the valve uh, body joint in this case. I am writing this point now for too long, but it is extremely important to start every phase of the painting process with a clean airbrush in pristine condition, or you will end up with clogging reactions of incompatible paints and metal flocks within your varnish. Okay, you have seen it now, I got myself a hardened Steenbeck Infinity 2-in-1 CR Plus Edition. But why the fuck would someone spend 240 euros on an airbrush? There's no real connection between the race in budget and the gain of a better result, at least in my current skills. As I progress in my learning curve, I now felt the point where my current airbrushes are getting more and more restrictive in advancing further. I have still a long way to go and need a bigger shoe to grow in. The Infinity is a well-proven design and quality product, both demanding a price. Um, when I have to invest that money into a single unimportant tool, I do not like to make experiments here. But looking into other brands, 240 euros does not buy you a flagship model either. When it comes to selecting a brand, I was a little bit biased by Hartland Steenbeck being a German company. Don't judge me with false patriotism here. I see nothing wrong in preferring a local company and supporting them by buying their product instead of buying a similar or equal product somewhere else and shipping it around the globe. What does ZR Plus mean? Um, well, somewhat of a more resistant triple coating. It is most likely marketing to me. Copper, nickel, chromium are the usual layers for any um, chromium plated surface. However, my girlfriend is allergic against nickel, so it was nice to know that they covered the nickel actually with chromium. Nickel can be used as standalone to get a chromium-like finish if you ask yourself. 
Let's have a look at the rear end where it gets a little bit too blinky for my taste. The trigger spring is adjustable with the first ring. The second one is the clamping mechanism for the needle. Both are accessible with the rear piece still on. This might be the first airbrush that is not be used in stubby mode only. And yeah, you have a cutout there, but reaching it with thick fingers is not always a given point. On the rear we have a dial cup restricting the travel of the needle. Very nice, it can be disengaged for fast cleaning the tip. This is a well thought through design, but with sweaty fingers or wet hands it's too slippery to overcome a little bit of a gimmicky first impression. If it proves useful to me, I will most likely replace this part with a knurled one on my lathe. However, this feature justified the first half of the 40 euro price increase compared with the Evolution CR Plus 2-in-1 series. Overall build quality is very nice, seen far less for much more in different applications. If I had to find one thing that I really don't like, it would be the design of this ring. A simple tool is required to break it loose. Grippy surfaces for finger operations are preferred on my side. Last but not least, I bought a 2-in-1 package containing both a 0.15 and a 0.5mm nozzle needle combination. The 0.4mm one takes care of the most work while a 0.15 will open up some new possibilities in detail work. Both my cheap airbrushes are triple sets, with 0.2mm being off-limits due to the poor quality of the tool and the viscosity of my preferred water-based paints. Since I now have a quality tool and lacquer-based acrylics, I am looking forward to new possibilities. 0.15 is likely as small as it gets. Here are the other 20 euros that made me buy this over the Evolution coming with 0.2mm instead. There are two paint cups included, one with 2ml and one with 5ml. Both have their own lids and are reasonably sized for model painting. The inside is very smooth but not a mirror finish. PDFE seals at the inside of the body again, very nice. Interchangeable cups are not a high priority feature to me, but still an improvement to my cheap ones. Well, and how does it spray? Um, you will see this in about every build that is to come. In a year from now I will discuss the performance most likely in a review. There is no doubt this thing will spray. Will it enable me to improve myself is the real question I can't answer at this moment. And if you came that far into the video, do me a favor and click that subscribe button down below and use the like, dislike or comment function to give me an honest feedback. So long for now, now go and build a scale model kit instead of hanging around on my channel. See you next time.